Please note that this segment was recorded two days before the Three Mile Island news broke. So when speaking about valuation, James and Kai are not considering Friday's 23% increase in Constellation Energy stock or Talon's 6% rise. Amazon said, look, we're, we're going to need a lot more energy for our cloud network. A lot more. And so how did that happen? Yeah, so Amazon is trying to develop a new data center for Amazon Web Services right next to the Susqu Susquehanna power plant, which is Talon Energy's biggest power plant. It's over half of their revenue. So the region of the U.S. we're talking about here is the Mid-Atlantic. The Mid-Atlantic is like Pennsylvania, New York, Delaware. These states up there are pretty much the home of the Internet. So the Internet well, is pretty much based there. The biggest infrastructure for the Internet is based in that area. And for a lot of different reasons, for one, they don't have tornadoes or hurricanes up there. They kind of have better weather year round. Um, and also it's kind of the home of power production for the U.S. also. It's a more reliable power grid up there. You've probably heard stories about Houston having all these outages. So AWS did a deal with Talon, Talon being an independent power producer, to have a small nuclear reactor and, and provide energy there. Um, so don't don't fact check me. So there's, there's a difference between small nuclear reactors and larger ones. I'm not 100% sure it's a small one, but let me just say this deal is under pretty significant scrutiny. So the regulated utilities for that area made a complaint to, I believe, the federal government. I don't think it was a state or local complaint. I believe it was a federal government complaint um, saying that essentially Talon, through making this deal with Amazon, is going to raise the cost of electricity for residential and small business customers. So the the regulated utilities are upset about this deal. And from what I understand, the deal is actually somewhat on hold. And it's funny, I just listened to the Constellation Energy earnings call today, and almost all they talked about was the Talon uh, federal complaint from the regulated utilities. And both Talon and Constellation are pretty upset that regulated utilities are trying to stop progress on energy supply to AI. I mean, and, and it's also considered a national security issue. Like if we're going to develop our AI for national national security reasons and be ahead of these other countries that might develop it for their own purposes, then we need the power to do that. And it looks like regulated utilities are upset they're not going to get their piece of the pie. So that complaint is in the process of playing out from what I understand. But um, it looks like Talon is pretty positive on the topic and they expect to have a, a good outcome, in which case they get a good chunk of cash from that deal. Um, so, so yeah, th I hope that answers your your question. Um, I will, I'm going to all do a short segment real quick, quick on Talon. I'm bullish on Talon, mainly because of their association with, with, association with Amazon. And I also am bullish on the outlook that is energy and the demand that is there. But can, can you give us, can you give us your, just like, are you buying or selling? And then can you do it on Constellation and Talon at the same time? Well, I, I will do both, but let me give you Talon. I'm buying Talon because of their association with Amazon in the long term, as well as energy demand. But let me hint on one last thing and that you said is nuclear. And so one of the things that when I'm looking at the big picture, and this is me particularly um, looking at this, and you can correct me if I'm all wrong, is that I think nuclear power, my personal opinion, is, is that in the future, there will be a higher demand for nuclear. I, I think it's one of the best, if not the best source of energy that will be required with the demand that is AI and cloud networking. I think, to me, it's a staring at me straight in the face that nuclear is going to be the solution. Now, that being said, um, Oh, solar, wind, I just don't know. I, I really don't know there. Um, I have not seen that play out, uh, specifically in the state in which I live. However, I am very bullish on nuclear. And so one of the things that I wanted to highlight in regards to CEG, which both of these are fairly new IPO companies, essentially because of the IPP that you're talking about, is that there is, for CEG, Constellation Energy, um, they're one of their main sources of revenue is nuclear power plants. And so I find that appealing as far as an investors from an investor standpoint, let's look at the numbers for CEG, a company like constellation energy. It's a PE of about 20, uh, to 30, but 24 currently forward PE, not much 
better. However, it's stayed stable. We've seen a big EPS beat over the last, I think, two quarters, uh, steady revenue. We've had a Q4 of last year. What they had is a gap loss. Their expenses were too high. And so I don't kind of, yeah, I don't, I don't put a big strike on them for that. I don't know if strike's the right term, but I really like their asset. I like their liability. They don't have a lot of cash, but all their other numbers look good. And as far as the future output and, and the energy demand, I really like that. So explain the gap loss and why their expenses were too high. Yeah. I, so from what I understand, that probably came from the increase in natural gas prices. So that actually hit the entire sector pretty hard when the price of natural gas ran up so high. So these companies are extremely difficult to, to understand. They get lumpy order flow. There's regulation mixed in. They're just difficult to understand exactly how they work. Sometimes they sell puts on things. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, it's hard to understand. But what I would say is, so for let me just address your nuclear versus wind and solar thing, first of all. So if you want nuclear, and if you want to throw in a little bit of wind and solar too, Constellation and, and Talon are great picks. Now, if you go to some of the other IPPs, like for example, Vistra and NextEra NEE, which have been very popular stocks this year, they don't have as much they don't have as much of the um, nuclear in their order flow. So Vistra and NEE are a little more Texas based. But if you want to concentrate on the area of the US that's getting the most data center input, the most build, it, build out of data centers, you really want to go to the mid-Atlantic. You want to kind of go to the Northeast and that's going to be your constellation and Talon. So I, I would go with them over Vistra and NEE. But um, the other thing, yeah, so I think I covered everything you said, but I did just want to address one thing because you talked about like when these companies IPO'd and, and things like that. So Talon filed for bankruptcy a couple a couple years ago. So so Talon actually, but that was due to the natural gas run up. So they quoted a number of issues like loans and everything, like just too much indebtedness. And they've performed pretty well since they filed for bankruptcy, uh, reshuffled everything. Now, Talon was spun off, from what I understand, from its parent company in 2015. Constellation, from what I understand, was spun off a couple years ago. So Constellation was part of another company that actually was and remains to be a regulated utility. So Constellation is kind of the IPP portion of that previous company. So now Constellation is like a pure IPP play with none of that regulated utility. So I just really like, I really like the, the order flow, or you could say the business makeup um, of Talon and Constellation a lot better than any of the other companies. But last thing I wanted to mention real quick before we, we say anything else, year to date, Talon is up 162% year to date. Constellation is up 74% year to date. And just to throw it in for fun, NRG is up 60% year to date and Vistra is up 140% year to date. Now, if you look at, oh, did I say, I, I forgot to say Next Era. Next Era is up. 37% year to date. I mentioned NRG, which is one we haven't talked about yet. But um, but yeah, so these companies have seen pretty big run-ups this year in anticipation of this, this build out and to a smaller degree to their uh, success that they've had so far. But, um, but yeah, I mean, generally, you're not going to get the kind of explosive earnings growth that you would get with like an NVIDIA from a utility company. But if you go with the IPP side rather than more of the regulated utility side, you might get better earnings growth, in, in my personal opinion. Yeah. So, I mean, I, and so what I like to do is I really like to go over the company's basic financials uh, when I'm looking at a stock. And then the next thing I like to do is try to determine where for myself I like to enter. If I haven't already had a position, do I like to add to that position? Perhaps, perhaps I need to trim that position. For example, NEE, NEE. Um, I had owned quite a few shares of NEE in the high 50s and 60s. It was a, in the, the, the uh, ETF for energy is XLU, XLU, but the energy stocks had been taken quite a hit and they're, they're typically defensive plays. So when people started to, uh, the mutual funds started to play defense, so to speak, I think NEE's seen, seen a little bit of a run now. We're, we're trading in the high 70s, low 80s with NEE. But in regards to Constellation Energy, I like some of the basic fundamentals. I like the future outlook in regards to whether I think the stock is going to uh, have revenue growth due to the energy demand. And the third thing right now is Constellation Energy, with everything with the pullback, is right about $200 a share, which is a psychological resistance level. We've also seen, the tech, for me, technical analysis, there's this ascending triangle 
and it's forming the right side of a base. And so the 21 day moving average has crossed the 50 day, the RSI is around 60, the MACD indicator looks good. There's some really good technical analysis that I'm seeing right now with Constellation Energy for me particularly. So um, I will say this again is they require cloud networking and AI requires a substantial amount of energy demand. And that will lead to other companies making money, period. Revenue will increase. And so um, these two companies I'd take a look at. We are taking a look at them right now. And the last thing I would say is, I'm high on nuclear and I'm also have been really in this nuclear trade for a while. Uranium ETFs is something that I've been sort of looking at from the demand of nuclear. I don't know about you, James. Um, that's one URA I've been, um, I've had a position in for a while, full disclosure, and have also traded it. The, vol the, uh, the volatility of URA has been pretty good as far as the premium collected on trades. So, yeah. Um, that's me particularly. That's my take. I will give you my 30 seconds real quick. I am a buyer currently of Constellation Energy due to nuclear demand from AI build out and technical analysis setup. What about you, James? Yeah, absolutely. And just one thing on stuff that you were saying. So you talked about energy and the energy ETF. I think you meant to say utilities. So XLU, you're right, is a utilities ETF. Energy is XLE. Usually when they talk about energy as a sector, they're usually talking like oil and gas manufacturers, not so much, um, not so much utility companies. But so I'll say I'm a buyer of Talon Energy because it's not a regulated utility. It's an independent power producer and they have a new exciting nuclear deal with AWS. And I am buying Constellation because after Talon, they're my second favorite utility. They're independent, not a regulated utility, and they have a great mix of nuclear, wind, and solar.